What's going on, everyone? Juice Bags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. I am here on floor 493, and today I wanted to play around a little bit with weapon manufacturers and Petrify. As most of you know, the dream combo of Shocking Revelations and Water Servo on a weapon manufacturer can no longer be made. Now, of course, these are still in the game as a legacy relic. However, you can't make a new one. Now, with that in mind, and me being a content creator and making these guides and such, I just don't use my weapon mans anymore, as most of you know. Now, sadly, this makes it so that I just haven't been using my favorite defense in the game, which is definitely the weapon mans. I love the EV2, I love the Monk, and that's really the main reason you see me use so much of their defenses, besides the fact that they're, they are extremely powerful. I just absolutely love those heroes. So I wanted to get Weapon Man's back into the mix, and Geek Illustrator Dad from Xbox actually has made some changes to his Weapon Man's, and I kind of wanted to test it out and do the same thing. As one thing can be said about weapon manufacturers, it is probably, if not the best, one of the best just blanket coverage defenses in the entire game that can be attuned to any element. Now what we're going to do is we're still going to do something really similar to that 1 amp warrior build, but I'm going to go ahead and take my relic off of my proton beams and I'm going to throw it right on the weapon mans and we're going to go with poison weapon manufacturers. Now we are still going to protect it so that tenacity mod is kind of going to kind of go to waste. And let's see, we don't need defense rate as I've got defense rate on there. And that allows me to free up one more shard slot. Now I can't upgrade the weapon mans, of course, so there's no point in stacking mass destruction on it as you're just not going to get the benefit uh, versus a defense that you can upgrade. And I thought, you know what? We're looking for blanket poison coverage. So let's get the biggest poison coverage area we can. So I'm going to be combining Deadly Strikes and Vicious Strikes and then using Destruction. So let's go ahead and check it out. Let's take a look at the map first. Uh, we've got Frosty Fodder, Controlled Burn, and Spellbreaker. Uh, Sigard Throwers with Lethargic and Wall Leech. Then we've got Game Ogre with Bullet Sponge and Detonator. Mob Gallery with Enraged and Pain Aura. And then the front line, maximum effort, and phased. Then over here, we've got, what, Psy Lava Womps with proximity and brittle. I think, uh, why don't we just go ahead and start things off right here. And let's look at the size of this weapon manufacturer. It just is a little over the top. There's no doubt about it. The size of it is absolutely massive, stacking deadly and vicious. Now, of course, we do still want to use say our lightning strike guard to buff everything and then we want a boost aura hmm is that how i want to do that i think that's actually not terrible and then now you see we've got poison coverage really going all the way out just about to the perimeter of this lightning strike aura as you can see the weapon man scrolling out to it so there's no doubt enemies will be poisoned big time by the time they make it in to that particular area with the reflect beams where the earth damage is going to hit them for the petrify. Now I do want to still add in a flame aura in the mix just for some extra damage. Let's put it say just right there. In fact this map has got so much DU. Let's go ahead and just put two of them. So let's go with a flame aura there and say a flame aura right there. Now I'm going to basically just rinse and repeat this exact same thing on every lane and then we'll add additions to the lanes that need a little bit more help uh, once we get just the basics of the lane all set up. So we're going to go with the Weapon Man, the Lightning Strike, and the Boost. Then we'll go something like that. And then something like that. And then let's do the same thing on these other two lanes. Uh, I think we're going to have quite a bit of mana left over, which will be good. Oh, you know what? I only put one. Oop, look at me. That's just habit right there. Good lord. The habits are hard to break. 
I only put one flame arrow on that other lane, so I'm going to want to go back over to it and go with two flame arrows, because I do know that there's more than sufficient amount of DU to cover that. Yeah, we just got massive, massive range on these weapon man. It's just crazy. Alright, so let's go with a flame arrow, say, right here. And then another one, just say right there. And that way we can still double dip on it. This lane will do something real similar. We'll put one. Uh, well, let's get one right there. And then just one right here. And that gives us the flame arrows. We still got the petrified going. Um, I'm really anxious to see how this plays out. Now over here, we do have uh, some spellbreaker and that controlled burn. Now, the control burn shouldn't be an issue because everything is going to be so covered by that poison, it's just going to be ridiculous. But, I do think I'm going to add something else in for that spellbreaker. Let's see, let's go ahead and get our reflect beam in. We'll get our two flame R's down. So we're good there. Now we've got a ton of DU left. Uh, what do we want for spellbreaker? Well, I think... I just love using cannons and harpoons or ballistas. Let's go ahead and go with, why don't we go with two, two ballistas and two cannons maybe? And that gives us just a ton of physical damage. Let me make sure my cannons were set up proper. Uh, yeah, they're looking pretty good. Now, do I want to go heavy cannonball? Yeah, let's just leave the heavy. I do like the stun fire a little bit better than heavy, I think, but we'll just leave it in there. And then, what else? Let's see, over here, we could maybe just go with a couple of ballistas just to help thin the crowd, plus uh, something to assist with those flyers. So there's a couple of ballistas there. That leaves me just shy. Hmm, we do have cyborgs over here. Can we fit another... I mean, this would pretty much guarantee that I never have to come over to this lane, I believe. So that should be pretty good. And then, just for funsies, as I just have been having a ton of fun playing on the Mystic, I'm going to DPS on the Mystic. And this is a Shadow Flame Knife Hero Damage build on the Mystic. So let's go ahead and check out Wave 1 and see how it goes here. Uh, we'll have tons of blanket coverage, so I'm excited to see exactly how well that Petrify does. And let's check it out. We definitely got a nice roadblock there. Now this lane, of course, being a frosty lane, is going to have those frost orcs in the mix, which will definitely cause a little problem here. Uh, so let's just help out a bit on this wave until we can get it thinned out just a touch. I'm concerned, too, about those ogres as, uh, you know... If the ogres walk past, then of course it's GG over there in that next lane over. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the minimap with it. If any ogres start making it very far along, I'll go over there and throw a little help in. My stuff is just getting destroyed from carelessness, and that would be staring at the minimap and just not even looking at the mobs here. Am I going to be able to get this one down? Jeez. Gonna have to thin this pack just a bit, that's for dang sure. I should have maybe gone with a poison dart tower, I think. Just to help keep these enemies poisoned. Could have helped that out quite a bit. I do think I'll be able to recover, but this is definitely not the prettiest situation to be in in wave one here. If something went wrong on another lane, it would definitely be GG. As there's just no way I'd be able to get over there and do anything about it. 139 mobs left. We should be getting relatively close to getting this all cleared out here. Keep these guys pissed at each other and fighting. Alright, well, it looks like, although it was not pretty, it looks like we survived that one. So I am going to throw... Hmm, what do I want to throw back? I'll, I'll throw back a Ballista, I think, maybe two cannons, and then a PDT. And that should help uh, this lane out here with all those frost mobs. And of course being controlled burn as well. 27 mobs left. We're just about there. Just 
just give a little help here on this lane. This lane is doing remarkably well with the Petrify, that's for sure. It's keeping them all backed up right there. We got big ice cubes now. That is a plus. Just about there. Five baddies left. Alright. Now that was a complete train wreck, but we survived. So, let's see here. How do we want to do this? Let's see, we need the Squire back. So let's get, grab the Squire. And I do like the Ballistas in for that physical damage in that lane. Do I want one Ballista or two, though? I tell you what, let's go... Ballista, Cannon, Cannon. And then that leaves 60, so going with a PDT would not be a problem at all. In fact, we could even buff it all then. So let's see, let's get Gobu out. And we'll throw a PDT right in front. And then... I mean, no reason not to buff it all, right? With the leftover DU. So we will get that going. Let me grab my Mystic back and see what kind of DU, or what kind of mana we have left to play with. Because we're definitely going to want some upgrades in here. You can really see that Petrify going well on that front line lane. There's no doubt there. Just going to hit the Reflect and both of the Flame Aras. on each of the lanes. This lane did pretty good, and I want to keep it that way, so... Let's do two ups on the Reflect, one on each flame. Oh wow, one short... Oh no, there it is, I'm getting another upgrade in. We'll just throw an upgrade right there on that... that Ballista. And... Let's check out Wave 2 and see if this lane holds a little bit better. The Petrify is getting on them really, really soon, but the Frost, these Frost Orcs are definitely putting in some work, and that's part of the problem here. They're getting the attack rate on my Reflect Beams just dropped way, way down when they push in. Still going to keep an eye on that Ogre Lane, but I'm not going to get fixated with it like I did last wave. I think uh, if I wasn't staring at the minimap so hard last wave, I may have not had the issues on this lane that I had. But well, we're doing pretty good so far. Mobs are uh, mobs are healthy, but they are dying. It feels like a few more flame aura ups over here to help kill those frost orcs quicker. Might be just what the doctor ordered on this lane here. Let's see, is Nash gonna die? Yep, Nash down, and that last ogre down too over there. So it was a little close. It looked like on the minimap that Ogre made it all the way to the end of my defenses. But it did eventually die before stepping out of them. What do we got going here? That's a little bit of a mess. Let's see if I can get my pet in the mix here to help me out some. There we go. And then we've got our 93. I think... Uh, on this particular lane, the Petrify may just be doing too darn good, as it's just creating a complete roadblock here. Yeah, stuff is just getting petrified, and the mobs are so healthy here that they're uh, completely just blocking the path. So let me just give a little assist here on this lane to clear this lane out. 24 beds left. Get the pet going again here. Get a little sandstorm going. There we go. Alright, so I feel like these inner lanes did really well. This lane could use a little more love. I'm going to go ahead and hit that Reflect Beam twice to give a little bit more power against uh, stopping those ogres. And then let's head over here. We got that Frosty Fodder Lane is what's doing us up here. Let's go ahead and upgrade both of those flames. Let's hit the Reflect as well. 
And then you know what? Let's get all of this stuff back here. And that should be pretty decent. Get one more up on that reflect. Now I'm hoping this is a complete game changer here and I'm not even to a point where I need DPS on this lane, but let's see. Let's see how they hold up. Of course I want to be available to uh, DPS the lane if need be. Well, it looks like that may have done the trick. There's a few mobs that are pushing, but very few are making the cut and getting through. Here comes uh, several frost orcs. Let's see how it holds through this. It's actually doing really, really good. It's doing super good. So actually, I think we're in really good shape now. Of course, it depends on what bosses we get and everything else. These frost orcs don't help the matter. Captain is probably going to push through. Let's see. Oh, the captain's actually just now at the reflect beams. So maybe the captain won't push through. There we go. Captain down. Oops, wrong button. Yeah, this lane held fine, so we are in good shape here now. Get some dive bombing on these EMPs now. It's like they don't want to do it. Ah, here we go. I'll soak one up. That'll be fine. And then back over for that slow motion lane. Just to help clear this one out, just to speed things up. When all these warbors start coming out, they just, you see, it just creates a wall here of petrify. Looking pretty solid here, though. Oh, wow, look, they're falling all the way down the ledge there. Huh. I wonder why he's just not plunging. There we go. Alright, so they're all cleared out. That far lane has been doing great, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna get grab the mana here, but I'm just gonna leave it alone. As this lane is just doing incredible. I'm actually hoping by the end, by wave five, that I'll be able just to sit here and watch without actually uh, contributing at all. Let's see, so we are full up up front now, which is pretty darn good. I'm thinking that should just annihilate this lane. Quite a few bads coming out here this time, so just gonna have to wait it out. No assassins. I didn't even notice when I was reading the lane tags that there were no assassins this map, but I am not complaining. The Mystic actually feels like she does a little bit better against the assassins than the Monk does. A little more survivability. Alright, we got a Yeti rolling out. This one will be... I'm curious. I'm not going to contribute, unless I have to. It looks like the Yeti is actually going to get wrecked. Yep, Yeti down. Very nice. And the Ogres over here have just been getting smacked. So I don't need to worry about them at all, for sure. And it looks like this lane is now pretty self-sufficient. See, the benefit you have here... Which is good and bad. It actually slows the run down a little bit. But, you know, the explosions are what's giving that earth damage. Now, the explosion radius is actually fairly decent. It's going to come, like, out to, to the front of this right here. So, really, as soon as this weapon man can start poisoning, even with having double range stacked on it like that, 
they are already in petrify range. So they're going to get petrified all the way down, all the way through all of this. Really through the entire length of the weapon manufacturer's poison range. And that's pretty damn awesome. Let's see how Gribs does here. 769 million health. That's a pretty healthy Griblock. Gribs meet weapon manufacturer. Is it going to get him? It's actually going to be real close, I think. Ooh, just barely. He made it all the way to the end. But there's Griblocks, completely unsupervised. Oh, we got some flyers making a push here, it looks like. Oh, ho, ho, that was dangerous close. And there's the benefit of watching that minimap. Alright, so let me get a couple more ups over here because of the flyers. Now, I'm surprised the flyers didn't blow these up. Let's upgrade both of those. And let's hit this game ogre lane again, just to make sure it's good and fat. And it appears that it is, and then we do have uh, another captain here, so let's go ahead and double up that reflect beam here. Now I'm going to try to get through this wave without doing any damage, so let's see how that goes. Wave 6, spectator mode only. It's going to be very difficult to do, I'm so used to holding down the right click button and just running around on this gal. really doing pretty good. I should come up here where I can get a better view. Maybe. There we go. Yeah, you can see the Petrify starts way, way out here. So they're like nowhere near the Weapon Man yet when the Petrify is hitting. And even with those Frost Orcs getting their freeze on, on that Reflect Beam, they're still doing really good. And the frost mobs that are making it to the end, the ballista and cannons are just putting the finishing touches on those. There's almost one, well, not quite half the wave yet. And we've got a captain in that big mess in the middle again. I'll just keep an eye on that, but I do think the captain will get wrecked. We will see here. See, the captain is what? Almost to the weapon man's now. And yeah, we got a little shieldy coming out right here too. Now the shieldy could potentially cause problems as well. How's the captain doing? The captain's getting really low. Alright, captain down. Where is the little shieldy gobu at? It's in that mess, I think, right there. Is it in the middle of those mobs somewhere? I can't quite see it yet. Once it's back in that pack in the back, which is possible. Wow, there's not really going to be 200 mobs left in this lane, is there? Alright, now the shield is starting to take some damage. Oh yeah, getting chunked on now that that Petrify is kicking in. Yep, shield be down, no problems. So that is good stuff as well. And then now we just see the huge backup that gets caused here by the Petrify just working so, so well. You get a bunch of melee mobs like this that do have collision with each other, and it will cause quite the roadblock here. Uh, decisions on whether or not I want to actually assist or just let that wave go. Just to save time, as, you know, they're not ticking down real quick, as you all can see. <laughs> And there is a lot of mobs still to come out, it appears. Jeez. A lot of these guys are just walking in place. There's so many mobs petrified in front of the pack. They just can't get through. They can't push out. But I said I was going to try to make it through the wave without DPS, and so I am going to stand by that. Let's take a look at this wave or lane over here, as we really didn't look at this lane much. Yeah, see, see the Petrify starts way out there, using the Weapon Man like this to get that blanket poison coverage in. I mean, it's just doing good, and it's AoE coverage. 
Now this is a lot of flyers right here. This looks like, to me, this looks like it's going to need my assistance, but we will see. Maybe not. Oh, we actually held held them off, surprisingly. We got a Slykelion dying over here, and then all we have left looks like it's just one mob, and it appears to maybe be stuck. Oh, he's off the ledge. There we go. There's that last one mob down. So, not too shabby. Definitely a thought. Uh, remember, you don't have to have the Electrocute and Shocking Revelations. In fact, without having the water combo with Shocking Revelations, just that mod by itself loses a lot of its value, as you just don't want to have Shocking Revelations as it by itself, because it just triggers the Diminishing Returns so, so fast. Now, uh, as always, I'm always hopeful that one day there will be a 10 of 10 mod sitting in the box. Crap, and I gave up my golden ingot to get it. Let me grab another one. We switch to the monk this time. There's going to be a 10 of 10 in that box. I just know it. There never has been, all the times I've done this map, but one day, one day, it's going to happen. Will it be today? No, it will not. But there we go, that was floor 493, using a little different Petrify combo with the weapon manufacturers back in the picture. So thank you all so much for watching, make sure to click that like button and please subscribe to the channel. I will be back soon with more Dungeon Defenders in all of its forms. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.